Hey guys, what's up? Uh, I wanted to make a video and go over some things geared towards the newer players again. I've gotten a few of my friends into the game recently and I tell them, as I tell everyone, ask me as many questions as you like. I'll never get sick of them. You'll never bother me. I'm happy to answer any questions you have as often as you have them. And based on some of the questions I've gotten recently, I thought it might not be a bad idea to put a little video together of, of five things for new players to know that you're more than likely going to be curious about when you get started. So, the the first one is I'm, I'm kind of grouping them all into one. But it's it's Angelmon, Rainbowmon, and Devilmon. So, let's start with Devilmon. They're they're the most important. They're some of the most valuable things in the game, and the hardest to come by. So, what when you're a new player, here's what you want to do with Devilmon. I don't remember honestly at what point you unlock storage. But once you do unlock storage, you want to start putting Devilmon in. As a, as a newer player, you you don't want to use Devilmon on, on any of the monsters that you you obtain unless you pull a Nat Five. What a Devilmon does is it increases it's a skill up, so it powers up the skill of a monster randomly, as all skill ups are random. The way that you power up skills is you either feed a monster. The same monster, it doesn't matter which element, so let's say you have a wind war bear and you feed it a fire war bear, it's going to power up one of its skills. A devil mind does the same thing. You don't want to feed a devil mind to a war bear because a war bear is a common monster, so a war bear is easy to skill up. Whereas, let's say you pull in at 5, uh, a wind archangel, Dominic. Uh, you're not gonna pull a ton of archangels. You'll, you're, you'll be, it'll be like getting struck by lightning if you pull a second archangel. Um, and if you do pull a second arch, arch, archangel, you're not feeding it to the one you have. So that would be a good time to use Devil Mine. But it's highly unlikely that you're gonna pull in that five that early. So what you want to start doing with these is just stockpiling them, because one day you will pull in that five. It will happen. It might take a year, but or two years for some people, um, but you you will eventually get a monster worth using these, and the more you have, the better. If you have 50 of them sitting in storage, you don't have too many because you can burn through them really quick. Some monsters need 15 of these to, to fully skill up, so you can burn through them very quickly. So as a new player, you'll get these occasionally from events, um, maybe a few rewards for progressing through certain parts of the game. But, don't use them. That's my advice to newer players, is don't use these guys. There's going to come a time later in the game where you're going to have a better understanding, and you're going to be able to put these to a much better use than, than as a new player, and, and dumping these into three-star monsters. That when you are when you hit level 30 and you understand how valuable these are, you're going to hate yourself for it. So, that's my advice. Devilmon, go in storage. Forget you have them until you pull a Nat 5, or a really rare Nat 4. Something better use. Angelmon. By the way, don't level these guys up. You don't need to level them up. They're just skill ups. That's all they're for. Angelmon. They come in any element, any of the five elements in the game. And what you want to do with these guys is awaken them, get them to level 15, and then feed them to the matching element. I save them, and then if I, let, if I pull somebody that I want to max out real quick, that's what I use them for. You can use them immediately. Uh, you know, these are not super rare. They're not a real hot commodity. They're a cool little bonus to have, but they're not super important. So if, even if you get them and waste them, you're not losing anything you can't gain by doing a few runs for EXP and, and one of the scenarios. So just a cool little bonus, but not super important. So I don't stress out too much over these guys. Now, Rainbow Mon. I know I have some somewhere. Okay, Rainbow Mon. Here's the thing with Rainbow Mon is when you get them from wherever you get them, whether it's an event or wherever, anytime you obtain a Rainbow Mon, they're going to come like this. Two, three, or four star, and they're going to be max level. What you, what you need to do with these guys is evolve them. So as you see, I have two maxed out Rainbow Mon that I got from somewhere. And these two were three star at one point, but I evolved them. So now, now they're just food to make a five star. Don't level them up. Don't feed them anything. 
for experience. Don't put them in the, in the garden unless you just want to. But really all you need to do with these guys is evolve them and then use them to evolve someone else. So that, that covers all the, the mods. The number two thing I think you should do is save your crystals. It is tempting as a, as a new player to come into the summoning block and see, crit, and see mystical summons for 75 crystals. And a lot of players want to do this. A lot of new players want to spend these crystals on, on, on these summons. I don't think it's a good idea. And here's why. In the shop, there are packs. Summoner pack and premium pack. The premium pack gives you 11 mystical scrolls, 100,000 mana stones, and one maxed out angel mark for each tree. Now, if you do a crystal summon, it's 75 crystals. So, if you save up your crystals to buy a premium pack, you're basically doing buy 10 summons, get one free. But you're also getting 100,000 mana stones. For basically, basically pays for the summons, all but one. It pays for all but one of the summons. And then you're getting the angel mark for each tree. So, premium packs for a new player up to a certain point are the way to go. You will hit a point in the game where you upgrade premium packs, but, you know, up until your level 30s, this is going to be what you're going to want to be doing with crystals. You're going to want to hit 750 a few times and buy a premium pack. And do that a few times till you pull some decent monsters. And then what you can start doing is developing some kind of system of, of making sure you have crystals left. So what I do with my crystals, uh, until recently, I blew a bunch of them. I was up over 11,000 crystals, and I don't spend a ton of money on this game. But what I do is I, I decide, like right now I'm at 3,000, I'll, I'll hit 3,250. Like I won't really spend any crystals, and I'll hit 3,250, and then I, I won't go below 3,250 again. So, and I just keep saving, and then I'll, I'll play around, and but, but I'll, I'll hit a certain number, and then refuse to go below it again. So. You, as a newer player, you could say, okay, uh, I'll buy a few premium packs, and then I'll hit a thousand crystals. And um, then I won't buy my next premium pack till I'm at a thousand crystals. And then I won't buy my next premium pack till I'm at 1250. And then, and this way you, you start leaving yourself with crystals, because eventually you're going to want to start doing energy refills and, and using your crystals for things other than premium packs. But as a new player, trying to grow that, that monster box and get monsters worth using, premium packs are the way to go. I don't even like the summoners pack, if I'm going to be honest, but um, it's it's just so much more worth it to save up. You get to do 11 mystical scrolls at a time, which in most cases guarantees you a lightning. You're going to average a lightning every premium pack. You will see packs where you don't get a lightning, and you'll see packs where you get three lightnings. So I think ultimately it balances out to about one lightning per pack, uh, which is a four or five star. So uh, Never do a crystal summon. I don't, I don't think crystal summons are ever the way to go. Some people pull nat fives with them. Everybody's got their different ways. Some people don't think buying scrolls from the guild shop is a good idea. That's how I pull two of my nat fives, just randomly deciding to do it. So everybody's got their own little way, way they like to play and things they like to do. But those are, these are ideas you can develop as you come to understand the game. So this again, this is more to help the newer players progress and and not have a lot of things to regret as as they progress. So. That's my advice. Save your crystals. Don't do crystal summons. Save my premium packs for a while. Number three, rune farming. Uh, I have a video that explains to you the rune system and, and how you should be looking at ruining, ruining your monsters. But one thing I don't think a lot of new players understand, because I don't necessarily, I don't really think it's explained enough in the game. There is a loading screen that says that I know, but they don't. They don't give you all the information that I think you need. So, if we look at Garen Forest, we see that if we go to drop info, it tells you what monsters you can get from here and then what runes are going to drop. So, Garen Forest drops energy runes. If you look at the levels, they're numbered. So, one through six, whatever number you're playing correlates to what rune slot, what rune will drop. So if in your in your runes, if you go back and look at our runes, 
we notice we have six slots. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So let's say you're trying to ruin a monster and you want them on energy. And you know that for your two, four, and six, you want to have HP percentage for this monster. Let's say it's your, it's your water fairy and you want to get some, some good energy on her. Or, uh, I don't know, I know that her heal bait scales off attack if I'm not mistaken, but let's, let's for the sake of argument, say you're looking for HP percentage runes. Uh, so we'll come into Garen Forest and we'll start with two. And we'll, you'll keep battling two and every, every energy rune that drops will be a slot two. So then it's just a matter of finding an HP percentage rune for slot two. One, two, three, or four star, depending on how high of a difficulty you can farm and how lucky your, your drops are. And this is much more ideal for a newer player than farming giants, where I'm not sure how detailed it is, but yeah. These are all the different rune sets that can drop from giants. So we've got five different sets all with six slots that could drop. So the, the odds that you're gonna pull a slot two energy HP percent rune go down drastically than if you're just farming Garen Force stage two. Now all you now the only luck you need is HP percentage rather than energy and slot two and HP percentage. So for newer players, this is this is the way to go in my opinion. Now eventually you're going to outgrow the types of runes that this drops and you're going to need to exclusively farm Giants and Dragons, but that's later down the line, so. Uh, and and from now it says, let's, let's see, you need Fatal, same, same concept. If you want slot 2 speed or slot 2 attack, you just, attack percentage, you just go slot 2 or stage 2 and keep farming until you get that rune that drops, so. Yeah, any, any stage. Go into drop and bow, see what kind of rune drops, figure out what kind of rune you want to put on your monster, and, and that's, that's how you do that. I think that's a very useful thing that is probably not explained in quite enough depth for the newer players. So, those are the, those are, yeah, that's great. So, number four, find a guild. Uh, I don't know, I honestly don't remember at what level you're allowed to join a guild. I don't think you have to be very far, though. I think level 8 is when you can start chatting, so maybe when you're level 8. And find a guild. Find a guild that, you know, is reliable and has some has a good mix of people in it and has friendly people in it that understand that you're a new player and don't necessarily expect much of you right now. You can be in a guild without having to attack and defend, so... Um, it's a good idea to go ahead and get in a guild and start getting guild points for your guild's battles and it's, it's just good to, to have the community and, and have somebody to talk to and it, it kind of plays into the, the fifth tip which is ask questions. Ask specifically about monsters. You're going to pull a lot of monsters in this game. I mean there's, there's a ton of monsters and when you're new, there's so much information to absorb and there's so many things to do. It takes it takes a few months to really get a, an idea of what monsters are worth keeping and which ones are not worth keeping. I mean, if we go into the collection and look at this, we're just on fire right now and there's this many monsters. So it's going to take you more than a few weeks to, to grasp. Uh, I pulled a fire golem. What do, what do I do with it? How does he compare to the other golems? You know, that's that's where it really starts getting getting serious. Because let's let's say you pull a a wind griffin, wherever he is, he's in there somewhere. I'm completely overlooking him, and now it's kind of become an issue. And I'm there he is. So you pull a wind griffin. That's a great pull. He's a he's a key monster in this game. You're gonna need a Bernard. For a lot of things in this game but a water griffin you don't need at all fire griffin some people like to build but he's not a necessity but that's that's what i mean there's, there's there's enough monsters and enough different elements and just because one element's good doesn't mean another element's good so before you make the mistake of, of just feeding a monster to someone else because you don't know what to do with it ask and it really helps to have a guild because sometimes 
the Summoner's War community, depending on how lucky you get in the chat, you're not going to get a straight answer at anybody. You know, there, there are a lot of great people in this game, very nice, very helpful people in this game, but there's a lot of jerks too, as, as with anything. And they're going to give you crappy information to make you do something stupid that you're going to regret later. So it's, it's good to have a guild that with, with people in it that you communicate with and, and that could trust a little bit. Uh, and just ask questions. Like, there's, there's a lot of information in this game. And it's, some of it takes a lot of time to figure out on your own. So it, it, don't, don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't worry about bugging people. It's, screw them. They're getting bugged. If you have questions and, and you, you don't want to ask the chat and you're not in a guild yet, come to the YouTube channel and, and ask me questions in the comments. I'll be happy. Like I said, I never get tired of helping out newer players and trying to help you guys understand the game. Uh, not have a lot of things to regret later, because uh, because man, I've I've done some things in this game that just I'm never going to be able to forgive myself for. So I want to help you guys avoid that. So just a quick recap: number one, Angel Mon, Rainbow Mon, Devil Mon. Angel Mon are not that big of a deal. They're cool to have, cool little bonus. Get them to level 15, awaken them, feed them to the same element. Devil Mon, stick them somewhere and forget you have them. Don't use them until you have a real understanding of how valuable they are, or you pull a nat 5. I mean, they're, they're always put to good use on a nat 5. Uh, and Rainbow Mon, you'll get them at 2, 3, or 4 star max level. Just evolve them, and then use them as evolution. Don't level them up. Don't, don't use them as experience power-ups. Only use them as evolution. Number two, don't spend your crystals on summons. That's it. Don't spend your crystals on something. Save up for premium packs and energy refills. That's that's what you should really be using your crystals for as a newer player. Number three, the scenario rune farming. Check which runes drop on which scenario and farm the level of the stage that correlates to the rune slot you're trying to get. Number four, find a guild, get a good, a good community, make some friends in the chat that, that are friendly and, and patient and give you good information. Find some way to have a little bit of community in this game. Line is an app a lot of people use. I know some, some of the guilds use Kick, so it's a way to communicate with people even when they're not in the same chat room as you. So something like that. And then the fifth one that kind of correlates with that one is ask, ask questions to people that you know are going to give you good answers. Your guild, come to my channel, uh, ask me questions. And that's that's pretty much it. That's just five quick things I wanted to go over. Kind of geared towards new players, obviously. And I hope it was helpful. And I'm gonna try to get back on making videos a little more regular. I've been uh, busy. It's started school and excuses, excuses, excuses. But I'm gonna try to get a little more active again on, on making my videos. So I will see you guys soon. And I don't know with what yet, but I'll figure it out. So have a good one. Hit like, subscribe, and all that jazz, and I'll see you guys next time.